The following program is a production of Pioneer Public Television. Hello and welcome to Compass. This week on Compass, something a little bit different. We often talk about the major issues of the viewing area and this week we're going to turn the camera on us and actually on someone who's been behind the camera and behind the microphone for a very, very long time. Don Eggert has been the voice of Pioneer for decades and Jim Thurine went and talked to Don back in March of 2018 and talked to Don about his history with Pioneer and his life serving the communities of western Minnesota and eastern South Dakota on radio. Here's a look at the story of Don Eggert. Television offers great visual images, but the medium is not complete without sound, vocal and instrumental music, and the essential ingredient of a voice which informs, guides, sets the scene, and creates an enhanced image of what you view on your TV screen. We at Pioneer Public Television have been blessed with a Steady Eddie, a man whose voice resonates with our viewers 24 hours a day. That familiar voice which tells you what is coming next on our channels and thanks you for your support. Our Steady Eddie has been on the air with us since the 1960s. In this episode, we meet the man behind the microphone, Don Eggert. Don, it is a delight, truly, for Pioneer Public Television to get to know you better as somebody in front of the camera, not just at the microphone. Well, basically my background was in broadcast radio, so, but uh, we did a lot of TV in those early years. Uh, before um, Pioneer Public TV actually had studios to do live broadcasts, and uh, we'd go to the transmitter building, actually did a fundraiser with the transmitter over in the corner, and uh, it was pretty loud. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it was successful. It was successful, yeah. and uh, but those were that was in the very early years. You know, many boys when asked, "What do they want to be when they grow up?" You know, and often the boys say, "Oh, I want to be a cop. I want to be a firefighter." Mm -hmm. When was your first thought that radio is where you wanted to be? Back in high school, before nineteen, whatever, uh, fifty-one, I graduated from Watertown High School in nineteen fifty-one. There was a man by the name of Jack Hanton who was uh, doing some interviewing of students uh, in the hallways and for a weekly radio program. And uh, I would watch Jack work. And I thought, gee, that's kind of fascinating. And that's where my first uh, inclination to be a broadcaster started. That goes back a long ways. A mm, couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so why uh, then did you bring KDIO Ortonville on the air? And, and who was with you? The idea. Uh, began right here in Watertown after work one night at the radio station and uh, three of us got together for coffee and uh, this was late at night because one of the engineers had to be there at sign off time and we were sitting around up on uh, uh, North 2nd Street saying you know we ought to start a radio station so we decided we'd go to Millbank South Dakota mm -hmm. and the property over there at that time wasn't available for what we needed for five acres to put the transmitter on so we drove to Ortonville on a very cold night and there was a little red schoolhouse out north of town and this was uh, it was about 20 degrees below zero and we found that that was for sale it already had plywood on the windows and they were going to store grain in it and so <laughs> we we were able to one of the partners is uh, was the name Jim Karcher and his dad ran the Ortonville Independent and so Jim became a fourth partner and uh, we were able to get the red school, little red schoolhouse that's out north of town. It's no longer a, a studio, but the transmitter is still out there on that same location. And they're storing grain in it, right? Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, now the frequency 
Yeah. It was signed by the FCC. Yeah, 1350. And, all right, and mm -hmm. that was to Ortonville. But to Ortonville, Since Minnesota. Millbank was not available, you went to Ortonville. We went to Ortonville, okay. yeah, we went to Ortonville, and it was, um, there, there were frequencies available. We, we were probably, a good thing we didn't do market surveys, we probably wouldn't have ended up in a smaller town. <laughs> but it was, it was such a great place to be, and uh, uh, it was right on Big Stone Lake. And that's, uh, we thought, well, let's start it here. It, nothing was planned real well, right? but somehow it worked. It did, yes. indeed. Mm -hmm. And uh, KDIO is still thriving. Yeah, they're still on the air. Right. They're, they're in a studio down in, in, in an area where it was once called Cash Town. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're, they're down there now. We went back there for one of the 50th anniversary celebrations to see their new studio. So that was kind of fun, too. So how and why did Pioneer Public TV get onto your radar screen as something you wanted to commit to? Well, the, the idea was probably just to, the idea to see what television was like. Because when Pioneer Public TV came on the air, they were basically a repeater station for uh, the uh, Minneapolis, what they called educational television mm -hmm. at that time. And so um, they did not, uh, they had recordings uh, of, some, of some announcer, and I don't remember who it was, that would do station breaks, you know, for Pioneer Public TV. And our, our engineer was a fellow by the name of Elmer Gage. And uh, we would uh, just, they would do all of this was done on tape recording, reel to reel, you know. We don't have that anymore. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's, that's, what, that's what we did for Pioneer Public TV in those years. Right, right. And, and that started in the original Studios, but, or was it, were you downtown? We were. We, no, we were out in the little red schoolhouse. All right. And I remember we, uh, I came out of college, graduated um, on the first of June, and moved that same day to Ortonville. And we started building the radio station on the first of June, of nineteen fifty six. And we went on the air the twenty third of June, or of oh, July, the next month. Oh my word! And uh, that was, uh, you know, you worked pretty hard to put a radio station on in that short period of time. So you've got to do everything inside, get the studio yeah, set. Yeah, have to build the studios and remodel. And put up and, a tower. Yeah, put, the, put up the tower. It's a 160-footer. And uh, Gates Radio uh, financed $20,000 worth of equipment. That included the tower. <laughs> <laughs> Times have changed. Yes, they certainly yeah. have. But now, uh, your commitment to Pioneer Public Television goes beyond just the fact that you have this background in radio and you've got a set of pipes, as they say, <laughs> that are, are, are meant to be heard. Why kind. Pioneer and why the commitment? Well, the, I don't know exactly how the first, the idea, I guess the, we go back to <clears throat> the years when uh, uh, John Heglin worked for Pioneer Public TV. And he was in uh, Ortonville doing a, an interview at the high school. And uh, he was setting up his cameras and, and uh, microphones and things like that. And that's how I met John. And that's how I got started coming in when we would uh, come in weekly with reams of paper uh, with, with uh, institutional announcements for Pioneer Public TV. And then we'd go down there and record, or I would go down there and record, spend probably the afternoon and record. And then I'd go home in the evening. So then they got the idea that they'd like to do broadcasting for live fundraisers. And so mm -hmm. it kind of morphed into that particular format. And that's how that became. So how many years were you, were you on the pledge drive? If you will? Well, if you can do the math, uh, I was on the pledge drive probably starting in the, when they started back in, uh, in the 70s or 60s, late 60s or 70s. So um, those... Uh, the dates kind of get clouded as the years go by, as you can well imagine. <laughs> well, I can identify. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, today's radio and TV worlds are light years away from that first day on the air in Ortonville and KDIO. What assurances do you think are there that local radio will continue to thrive as a profitable venture? Setting aside Pioneer for the moment, but radio is there to entertain and, well, you, you, and you, make you, money. You, you got the, uh, the word right, local. Uh, a lot of radio stations now in Minnesota, South Dakota, North Dakota, they're owned by large conglomerates. And in my opinion, uh, they kind of lost the local aspect. So if you stayed with that local idea, local news, baby reports, fires, uh, it doesn't have to be tragedy, golf tournaments, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, doing those kinds of broadcasts were, were important uh, to the community. And that local aspect is what 
uh, drove KDIO. Well, uh, to a, a great success story as you well, moved on. Yeah, we moved on, and uh, uh, it was never it was never a financial uh, mountain by any means. But uh, when we started the radio station, we had the, the four partners: Jim Karcher, Simon McCormick, Dick Schultz, and myself. And we all lived outside of Jim, who was a native there. We all lived in the same house, and we were making fifty dollars a week. <laughs> and we all bought houses and cars and, you know, and uh, out, out on North Minnesota Street, uh, Dick and Cy built houses out there. Um, but, uh, paid pre pretty much money, 12 5 for their houses. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. You can imagine. Ah, the good old days, indeed. Well, they were, they were uh, days when you worked hard at radio, and you still do. But the, that local aspect is, is still the key and has been for many, many years to the successful broadcasters. And that's... The same story for Pioneer. Absolutely. And we've got some tremendous programming that focuses on our, our neighborhood, focuses on rural issues. And you bring, at the fundraisers, they would bring in the, the JCs or they would bring in a, a, an organization in the city to answer the phones. Mm -hmm. And you'd look at that group of people, there'd be two rows of telephones, and you probably knew most of those people. Right. They were firemen, they were school teachers, they were high school administrators, and they were all answering the phone. Right. And to the benefit of everybody in the viewing area. Absolutely. You know, it, it's been a tremendous success story for Pioneer Public TV. But that's that local aspect that Pioneer has pioneered, really. Uh, to think that you could run a broadcast facility in, in this day and age, uh, broadcast radio, without records, without vinyl, without tape recorders, mm -hmm. uh, and that's what we're doing now. Um, the only tape recorders we got are the old ones back in the storeroom. <laughs> <laughs> so any, any regrets, uh, you know, as you look back on either television or radio, anything you would do differently as you look in a rearview mirror, if you will? Probably um, no. I don't have any regrets. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I have to stop and think. No, it was, a, a, see, broadcasters, it's, uh, it's a way of life. If you, you signed on on small market radio stations, as we were at that time, and you'd get up at five in the morning and you'd work a board shift and then you'd go home. Somebody would come in and fill in for you while you went home and ate breakfast. Then you'd work another three hours and then in the afternoon you'd have a board shift where you, you, you played uh, vinyl records, turntable, yep. three turntables and a couple of tape machines. Right. Ah, uh, the good old days. Uh, did you ever do any sales in radio? Yes, we all did. Yep. The four partners all, you, you, were, you were everything. Uh, the, main, the main salesman was Simon McCormick. And Dick Schultz was a salesman, and uh, and if I had any spare time, I did some. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you bring that heritage of radio onto television. And this this time, we, we wanted mm -hmm. to make sure that people see Don Eggert and not just hear Don Eggert. And it's, and it's kind of scary, isn't it? Oh, I don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> nobody, nobody in the audience is going to say, "Gosh, why did you interview that guy?" <laughs> you you have a legacy in Pioneer Public Well, TV. you're kind. Uh, but they've often said I had a voice, or I had a face for radio, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but uh, that was my primary interest in broadcasting, was in radio. And, but uh, we did hours and hours and hours of recording for Pioneer Public TV on Thursdays. And we'd go down every Thursday with a stack of copies that would be either sent up to us or they didn't have anything to fax like in those years, you know. No, but, you, along the road here, and you've been doing this now since the 60s, yes. you could have said somewhere, oh, I don't know, pick your I mean, early 1990s, well, I've had enough of this, but you haven't. You're still doing it. Well, I'm, I'm still active. I still, I still, uh, there's a, there's a disease, <laughs> I guess you could call it, that uh, somehow um, wants you to, wants to stay. I've, 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 I've failed at retirement three times, and um each time I ended back, uh, back in back in radio, I was I sold my properties in Ortonville on a Thursday in 1998, as I remember. By Monday, I was looking for a job, you know. So that's I, I don't know. That's just the way it is. I can identify. Mm -hmm. You sure you probably can. Yes, yes. I can. Mm -hmm. uh, looking back, there you know, on the air work mm -hmm. is live on the air yes. is is dangerous. <laughs> for those of us who, who it certainly it. is. Uh, but so now you record and the script comes out just right, just fine. Were there any times when you said, whoops, and you were on the air? 
Um, on Pioneer. On Pioneer. Um, I would. I said, "Oh gracious sakes!" or something one time when there was Ooh. a failure. But that 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 was a slip. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but the, that that does happen. You have to you have to consider when you're in a television or a radio studio that every microphone is live. What advice or suggestions would you pass along to students who become enthralled with television? What do they What <clears throat> should they be doing to learn the craft? Well, I think they should first of all. Uh, lend themselves to some uh, some education. Uh, there's a, there were, used to be a school, you're probably familiar with Brown Institute mm -hmm. in the Twin Cities, and there was Brown Institute, if you qualified to get, uh, become a student there, you were guaranteed a job. So when, if you graduated from Pioneer, or from uh, Brown Institute, uh, you knew you were, you might, might be working in Bemidji, you, you might be working in Wilmer, you might be working at Morris, you might be working in Aberdeen. Um, but you were working in radio, and uh, that was, I think, one of the things that enticed people. But that there is an uh, there w there is an education process to it. Um, if you're if you're interested in history, helps uh, finding out uh, kind of what makes a government run and what it does f efficiently. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to know the number of uh, council meetings and commissioner meetings that I've attended over those years, and I'm still doing it. And uh, people want to know what's happening at the local courthouse. They want to know what's happening in the sports department down at the high school. They want to know what's at the fire department. You were a fireman at one time. Mm -hmm. uh, they want to know um, what's going on next door. And that is important. So you have to have that basic interest in the community. So your station here mm -hmm. is local and live. We are KXLG. Right. Uh, we are in the, stu in the studio building at KXLG. Mm -hmm. Been on the air nine, some nine years, and is owned by Bob Fain. And uh, it is, as you can see, it's a grand facility. Oh, indeed. It really is. And uh, a good number of the people that work here worked over at KWAT in Watertown. Um, still got a lot of good friends up and down 212 that are working in radio, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it, it's it's kind of a it's hard to say why you stay in it, but you uh, you stay in it because you love it, uh, and that's I think is something that I've had that's been fortunate for me, and I think that's fortunate for any uh, job you might have, whether you're a doctor or whether you uh, work over at uh, Tires Plus or whatever you do, uh, you got to like what you do. And it shows when we hear your voice, now we see your face, but we hear your voice 24 hours a day. Kind of scary sometimes, oh. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, so as you look to the future, so your plans are to keep going and keep going and keep going. Well, I was uh, kidding with, with my boss, Bob Fame. Um, we were talking about, somewhat talking about what we're doing here. And he said, and I have, he came into the office where I work, and he said, we've extended the retirement age to 90, and I appreciated that. <laughs> <laughs> and did he double your salary? Uh, no, okay. but I, can I leave and talk to him about that? <laughs> oh, yeah, but I'll, we'll, we'll be your backup. We'll I appreciate you. that. Yeah, yeah, we'll be singing in yeah. the background the, when you make the plea. You're, you're not, I, I might add seriously, you're not going to get rich, rich at radio, but uh, there's, uh, there's such a, a reward in being part of the community and being a part of uh, a very important part of every community that does have a station, whether it be uh, television or whether it be radio, and uh, that, that's important. That really is. Well, and it's the same sense for Pioneer Public TV. Yes. The what we do with our local programming, buttressing those great PBS programs, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but keeping it local. And one of the anchor points has been. Don Eggert. When you hear the voice, even if you're not looking at your TV screen, you know you're on Pioneer Public Television. Next on Pioneer. I've said that a number of times. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think once or twice yes, over yeah. the years. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. You've worked with uh, a great number of people in the entertainment business. I mean, you've interviewed people from all over. Uh, I've had uh, a fortunate to, to uh, interview several presidents. Um, the, well, I think the first one was Richard Nixon. He appeared at Watertown, he was in 1965, I think it was, was uh, campaigning for Barry Goldwater. And uh, Secret Service wouldn't let us on the airport where he was appearing. So I went back to Ortonville, I was in a flying club, and I flew in. 
and I got the interview. Uh huh. So, so you found a way. <laughs> found a way, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's because it's only a, a twelve-minute or fifteen-minute ride from Ortonville to the airport of Watertown, and so I was right back, and I did get the interview. And uh, uh, George Bush uh, Jr., you know the W. Uh, yeah, he was just out of the CIA, and he came to Millbank uh, back in, I believe, in the eighties, and uh, spent a day at, at the Lantern Inn. And we got a chance to just sit there and visit with that man, and uh, regardless of his, um, regardless of his, uh, uh, your political uh, leanings, it, that's that's an honor. Uh, I, I interviewed Harry Truman um, in those early years, and uh, uh, spent a day with Harry Truman, and uh, he was uh, it, it, th th those. But it, it wasn't my doing. It was just the fact that the media is part of. Uh, dealing with presidents. Um, I did an interview with a guy in jail one time through the bars, you know, those types of things. Um, the, you work with coroners, you work with school teachers, you work with county commissioners, you work with mayors, and uh, that's just part of the, part of the cycle. <clears throat> but, well then, uh, in, in that, your career time, you somehow became friends with or got to know some star people. I mean, uh, uh, movie, radio, television. The, uh, well, Rod Trongard was one that came into many Minnesota radio and was quite popular in the sports world. And uh, uh, I, I met a lot of them, like Boone and Erickson over the years. Just met them because I was fascinated by those types of people. And uh, those, uh, and, and they, they, they made good, I'm sure they made financially good. But we went into those stations and we were just amazed at uh, seeing what they do and how they do it. Gordon Eaton was kind of an inspiration to me years and years ago. And uh, I I've sat, had a chance to sit down and have some coffee with him one, one evening at uh, WCCO. It's not WCCO, it's WCCO. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Mis most mispronounced word in broadcasting. <laughs> uh, and uh, I, I, I said to Gordon Eaton, I said, how do you sound so alive and vibrant all the time. And he said, by being a professional and in what you do. And that kind of stuck with me. Indeed. And, and, and he was right. You, you, you have to have a respect, not necessarily for the people, but for the institution and what it does for a community, whether it be television or radio. So and, when you're doing mm -hmm. your voice, as we hear every day on yeah. Pioneer, mm -hmm. uh, you're taking that commitment to whatever script you have in front of you. Yeah, it's, and um, it comes through. And I, I, when I when I record for, and I do a lot of the recording right here at KXLG, and uh, we move these, we move the the audio around on an MP3 file. Matt can, I can uh, do a, I can do a, a, a 15 second spot. It better be 15 seconds, or you'll hear from me. <laughs> <laughs> But I can, I can sit down in that studio and I can edit it and I can send him two choices, ones that aren't edited, but you can sit down and then I can send it on an MP3 file over to him at Pioneer Public TV and then I can pick up the phone and, and uh, by the time he's on the phone I can hear the loudspeaker of what I just recorded coming back. So technology has improved. And it Immensely. is. Immensely. Yeah, and it's great. It some, really is. Well, <clears throat> most, must have been, much of it is. Yeah. Ah, there are some downsides to some of this technology. Well, there, but one of the downsides to it, if you're, if you're a young man or woman coming into television or radio, the hours are, are not, as they say, bankers' hours. You, uh, you put in some long days, you put in some long hours. Uh, you might be working at midnight when other people are sleeping, but uh, that's part of the job. That's part of the job. Indeed, mm -hmm. indeed. You're still doing it today. Mm -hmm. You're still doing Pioneer's voice. Mm -hmm. And now you have your face in front of everybody. <laughs> uh, and it's, it's overdue. Well, I thank you very much. Yeah. This is an opportunity to give a, a credit to television and what they do locally at Pioneer Public TV. That's important. Uh, indeed and, it is. Indeed. And that's why they're successful.
yeah. and we'll uh, continue to build on that success. And lots of, uh, lots of good people. So one of these months in coming uh, mm -hmm. pledge drives, yes. come on over. You and I will do a, a, a I would gig together. I would love to do it. Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah, it really would because you, you got the brakes and won't you call, won't you call right now? 1-800-726-3178. <laughs> yeah. Make that call now. Make that commitment to Pioneer Public TV because it's you that makes programming like you're watching tonight important. <laughs> wow. I think we're going to cut that out and we'll just continue to use it. You hit it. The you, you got to, then then you'd sit down during the breaks and you say what are we going to talk about next <laughs> but uh, uh, that's the way it works Don uh, a rich <clears throat> heritage for public television in, in general but specifically pioneer public television has benefited so much from your talent and your presence and your continued commitment well you're uh, kind it, and I have benefited more than they have I really have it's, it's made my life worthwhile. Um, I've got a, a high-numbered birthday coming up, and uh, I'm going to work right through it. <laughs> Good man. All right. Don, it indeed it has been a delight and a pleasure. Thank you for sharing. And now our audience has that voice connected to this marvelous face. Oh, you're kind. Yeah, indeed. Thank you, Don. I Thank you. That's it for this week on Compass, the story of Don Eggert, the voice behind Pioneer. We'll be back with more great stories next week. Thanks for watching. Do you have an idea for Compass? Send your suggestions and comments to yourtv at pioneer.org.